Howdy friendos, my name is Stuart, and welcome to the part of the channel where we take a look at pop culture characters and determine what alignment they are in Dungeons & Dragons. Today we are doing something a little bit different, my friends. Today is a call-out post. That's right, Matt Pat. I'm making a call-out post on my YouTube.com daring to say that you might be wrong. To those, like, 3.5 people who are subscribed to my channel, but not also subscribed to all 13,000 of MatPat's channels, on the channel Film Theory, our boy has proposed that the main character of the movie Ratatouille is not only evil, but the actual antagonist of the film. Meanwhile, he also puts the claim forward that the villain of Ratatouille, the head chef Skinner, is actually the secret protagonist that no one noticed. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. I mean, he's clearly doing this all wrong, not asking for my expertise. Clearly Matt Pat doesn't know what he's doing with <laughs> those paltry numbers. If he wanted a channel to quantifiably weigh the morality of his decisions, he should have just messaged a channel he's probably never heard of or is anywhere near his target demographic. Am I right, boys? Anyway, that's enough sarcasm. Let's go ahead and get to the actual movie and answer the question. Does Matt Pat's video hold any water? Is Ratatouille actually evil? <laughs> you like that internet? I called the main character Ratatouille. What you gonna do, not subscribe to me? No, my watch time. Let's go ahead and introduce our characters. Our movie mostly focuses on the character Remy, a rat from the French countryside who has a knack and passion for cooking. He was born with an incredibly heightened sense of smell that is extreme even for a rat. He has the ability to sniff out and parse through individual ingredients in a food and determine what goes together and what doesn't just through smell alone. In addition to this incredible gift, he is also extremely resourceful and talented, teaching himself to read and use human tools through television and a cookbook written by the world famous chef and his personal hero, Gusto. Through this improvised education and grit, he managed to master the art of cooking with almost relative ease. This is skipping ahead, but as an example, just from smelling a soup he has never seen for a few seconds, he was able to improvise on the fly and add additional ingredients to the concoction in order to not only make it palatable, but something that impressed a highly trained French chef. However, being born as a rat, he doesn't exactly get a lot of opportunities to express this gift. After his father found out about this ability, he was tasked with checking for rat poison on all of the loot that his clan would end up gathering. It seems like Remy was going to be relegated to the poison checker for the rest of his life, but one day while he was in the kitchen, he was chased out by the elderly homeowner, and he and his family were chased into the sewers where they were washed away and then ended up in Paris, France. It is there that Remy discovers the restaurant of Chef Gusteau, but let's save the rest of that for the ding ding portion of the video. For now though, let's go ahead and label Remy's starting alignment as true neutral. I do this because... Well, he is a rat and he was born to a rat clan. You could make the argument that he should be lawful neutral since he is a social creature, but since Remy is more of a loner type artist than a typical rat, I do think this is more appropriate. We should also go ahead and take a look at the other character that MatPat is talking about during this video, and that is the head chef Skinner. This character was the sous chef while at the restaurant while Gusto was alive. We don't know what their relationship was exactly, but it's implied that they were extremely good friends given the position that Skinner had and the fact that Gusto left the restaurant to him, provided there were no other heirs. Skinner is abrasive, short-tempered, and rude. However, at no point until the arrival of Linguini does it imply that he is abusive or even disrespectful to the rest of his restaurant staff. In fact, like Matt Pat says, at the beginning of the movie, he admits his mistakes, listens to the advice of his staff, and is a shrewd businessman. So we will start Skinner's alignment at lawful neutral and see where it goes from there. In this particular review as well, we won't really be looking at any other characters because most of them are either plot devices or background characters that don't affect the narrative much, although I will give a brief summary of Ego and Colette because they have the most personality outside of our two focus characters. Also, I'll do Linguini, I guess, but don't expect a lot of words for him. But with all that out of the way, let's go. This is me. I think it's apparent I need to rethink my life a little bit. Whoa, 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 don't eat that! Remy's first act of the movie is saving his dad's life from the rat poison. He is then given the unenviable task of sniffing out rat poison for the rest of the clan. Since in his first act he saved his dad's life and then he continued to help out the rest of his clan, albeit begrudgingly, we're gonna go ahead and give him a nice solid lawful good. You think that maybe we shouldn't be so- Okay, so Matt Pat uses this as an example of Remy putting others in harm's way in order to cook something selfishly. And I would argue that Remy was actually being pretty responsible here. Here, he and his brother found those ingredients on their own and then cooked them together while staying outside of the house. I don't 
think he could have predicted the lightning strike though. I'm gonna say this is actually pretty lawful neutral. I know what this needs, saffron. It is saffron. at this point though, Matt Pat starts to really have a good point. By Remy's own admission, he believes that his clan is stealing food. And while I don't personally see it that way, since they mostly stick to garbage, it is a point in the evil direction since by his own accord, what he is doing is wrong. At this point though, Remy is pretty much performing a B and E and forcing his brother into a situation he clearly isn't comfortable in just to season his improv mushroom snack. Hell, Emil even calls him out. It's like you're involving me in crime, and I let you. Why do I let you? I won't be counting all the other times Remy has been down here on his own, but I will definitely count this time. And I will be counting this instance because he dragged poor Emil into this. Neutral evil. Ah! Ah! <laughs> the book! Nope. No excuses here. Remy steals a cookbook instead of running away with his family. Um, it's really not like a pinch of salt or garlic. This is actually property he's taking. Technically chaotic evil. Now go up and look around. Remy hallucinates seeing Gusto and searches around looking for food. He finds some at a party but doesn't want to steal, so he left. He then discovers he's in Paris, France and heads to Gusto's restaurant. Neutral. How dare you hire someone without my permission? We needed a garbage boy. Starting off Skinner's part of the wheel, he reacts pretty strongly to Linguini being hired without consulting him. Once he finds out that they hired him as a garbage boy, he chills out and shrugs it off. You could argue he's rude and smug about it, but like, so what? Neutral? Anyone can, that doesn't mean that anyone should. Well, that is not stopping him. What kind of tulpa nonsense is this? A figment of Remy's imagination noticed something that Remy couldn't possibly have. Where's the theory on this, Matt Pat? Also, because of Remy's freak out, he falls into the restaurant, which leads him scurrying around for a while. He tries to leave around a few times, but stops when he notices that he can fix the soup that Linguini ruined. Again, since this is a call out post on my YouTube.com, Matt Pat has a serious problem here with Remy doing this, claiming that this hand washing bit isn't enough to disinfect him, but this part here, where he lands in the sink full of soap, probably did the trick more. Yes, he was scurrying along the ground, but we just saw that Linguini cleaned that up earlier too. If anything, this little hand washing bit is to get the rest of soap and cleaning fluids off of him because that could be just as dangerous. Either way, my point is that Remy isn't quite putting anyone as in danger here and is just giving into his urge to create art. I am going to say chaotic neutral. How dare you cook in my kitchen? Dude, Skinner's reaction is completely justified. If I saw someone with no training doing some shady stuff in my place of business, I'd freak out too. Now, the biggest problem here is that Skinner is directly manhandling him. He is actually grabbing him and moving him around. This is probably a movie's got a movie thing. Either way, between this and the little freak out in the dining room, I'm just gonna say chaotic neutral. He has taken a bold risk. Again, Matt Pat claims that this part of the movie is meant to show that Skinner is giving Linguini a fair shot to prove himself as a chef. And that would be a good thing, except he neglected to show this part right here. Since you have expressed such an interest in his cooking career, you should be responsible for it. The implication here is that Colette is now his mentor and is in charge of training him as a proper chef. The implication being that if Linguini fails, she will then take a direct hit to her career, either by being fired or some other vague workplace punishment. Definitely lawful evil. Run! Skinner then spots Remy about to leave and immediately takes action. They trap him and Skinner orders Linguini to take him far away and exterminate him. Some of you animal lovers might be thinking that killing Remy is a step too far. I'd argue, maybe. Right now, Skinner is worried about being shut down, especially since the reputation is in such disarray. He probably doesn't care that Remy dies some sort of death. He really just wants the rat away from his restaurant. I googled how to release rats humanely and it's actually a big problem to try to do that in a big city like Paris, since you don't want to release them in any location where they can just invade another house or restaurant. I'm sure there's some sort of law preventing this, so Linguini and Skinner's only options here are to take it to a shelter to be humanely euthanized, drive all the way to the outskirts of town, or kill it somewhere far away enough as to not implicate Gusto's. I'm going to say lawful neutral here since there really isn't anything personal about this. Remy and Linguini agree to work together to cook at the restaurant. It's unclear whether or not Remy did this because he felt sorry for Linguini, or he thinks that this is his big shot at cooking at a restaurant, so I'm just gonna say lawful neutral. What did I expect? That's what I get for trusting a rat. 
Remy makes Linguini breakfast. He stole some spices from the neighbor to jazz it up, but honestly, I don't think it's a huge deal. Neutral good. If you wanted to argue chaotic good, I, I wouldn't stop you. Take as much time as you need. All week if you must. Those are some smart goals right there. Specific, Linguini must recreate the soup. Measurable, meaning he gets to keep his job if he does this and he'll be recognized as a chef. Achievable, supposedly he already made the soup once. He should be able to do it again. Relevant, this is a restaurant after all. And time bound, and he has a week to do it all in. See you guys, this is why Skinner is actually the best character in the- Ah, oh, damn it! I'm proving Matt Pat's point, damn it! Skinner's actually being a pretty good boss here. His welcome to hell comment really isn't a problem. Gordon Ramsay does this crap all the time and you guys love him, lawful neutral. A significant portion of this movie is Remy training, either on his own with Liguini or with Colette in the restaurant. We're just gonna label them all with a single neutral right now since nothing really changes and this isn't him getting disciplined or anything like that either. I know what the will stipulates. What I want to know is if this letter if this boy changes anything. Skinner learns that Linguini might be the son of Chef Gusteau. He consults with his lawyer about the situation who advises him to chill out and investigate. Basically speaking, if Linguini is Gusteau's son, then he is entitled to the restaurant and the Gusteau brand. Nothing will come of this just yet, but I do need to establish this for later. Tell them Chef Linguini has prepared something special for them. Sweet bread a la gusto. Skinner sets up Linguini and Colette with a recipe he knows is awful and does this to ruin their reputation. He's setting his new rising star and his only lady chef to fail. This is without a doubt a villain moment and lawful evil. Don't you dare. I'm not, I'm not, I'm... Remy and Colette prepare the recipe as it calls, but Remy pulls a last second change that revolutionizes the dish. This is a dick move, sorta. However, at no point is this meant to take anything away from Colette or the rest of the staff and the dish was saved. Plus, it's not like Remy has any way of communicating his attentions to anyone either. He is a rat puppeting a human. I'm just gonna give this a chaotic neutral. Ah! Skinner sees an opportunity to interrogate Linguini on Remy. He sees the rat in the hat and goes for it. He gets Linguini drunk, but fortunately he's either too stupid or too smart to spill the beans about it. He then makes Linguini clean the entire restaurant. I'd say this is a dick move on Skinner's part, but how come no one else cleaned up? No wonder this restaurant is failing, lawful evil. No brother of mine eats rejecta menta in my town. This is a part of the movie where Matt Pat really has a good point about Remy. Remy has a ton of food just laying out from his dinner, but he then goes into the restaurant to steal more food? Dude, just give him some of your dinner. Technically neutral evil. Wait, wait, wait a minute, he steals grapes and cheese? He had that on his blanket. Also, while we're playing internet armchair reviewer, how come nobody has complained about the fact that Remy's father Django, I'm sorry, his name is Django? All right. Hates all things human, like art, to the point where he doesn't even want Remy to walk on his hind legs, but has no problem with the exclusively human skill of playing instruments. And no, that elephant orchestra doesn't count. <laughs> change nature. This act is hard to quantify. Django shows Remy the exterminator shop in order to scare him straight, as it were. Remy counters this with his idealism about how the two species can get along. Since he's trying to convince his dad to see things in a more positive light, I consider this to be neutral good. I have this, this tiny, uh, little, little... <laughs> Yeah. Okay, controversial scene, uh, sorta, I guess. Again, Matt Pat uses this scene as evidence of Remy making unconsenting things happen. And while this is a little yikes from a human perspective, Remy saw this work earlier in the movie and used this as a Hail Mary, hoping to not be revealed to Colette. Remy's perspective is important too. We can't just judge this from our own sensibilities. Twitter. If the deadline passes in three days, then you can fire him whenever he ceases to be valuable. Skinner discovers that Linguini is the proper heir to Gusto, but doesn't share this information with anyone, despite the fact that it is in clear violation of Gusto's will. Neutral evil. Hey, uh, is there a problem over here? No, there is not. Wait here. God, I know this video was a call-out post, but like, I don't mean to keep dunking on MatPat, but in his video, 
He states that Remy is stealing food. He's doing it for the benefit of his brother, not for the benefit of himself or his friends. In fact, he tried to turn the other rats away, but the frickin' Hercules Rablat, who I can only assume was fed a strict diet of protein shakes and anabolic steroids, convinced him to go get more food for them. Because he's doing this more to protect his brother from Jorgen von Strangle here, I'd argue this is chaotic good. Oh, it's complicated. Oh, this is interesting. Remy reads the will of someone he literally has no connection to outside some hallucinations. It is a good thing he does too because he discovers that Linguini is his son. Remy then runs off once he's discovered by Skinner. Skinner, who then chases Remy into the streets of Paris on a scooter he stole from an employee. Remy then turns the papers into Colette and Linguini. Lawful good for Remy and chaotic evil for Skinner. Yes, Inspector. I wish to report a rat infestation. He's Say it with me, folks. In Matt Pat's video, <laughs> love you, dude. It's said that Skinner used this moment to report about the health code violations happening at the restaurant. He's literally only doing this to get back at Linguini. This isn't altruism. It's tattletailing. If he really cared about this, he wouldn't have been so secretive about it at the beginning of the movie. Lawful evil. Don't give me that look. Remy is mad that he isn't getting credit for his art. Ooh, but you should create art for arc's sake. Why do you need recognition? Blah, 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 blah. I hate capitalism. This Disney movie made a hundred years ago is problematic. Sometimes I shower with my shoes on. Twitter? Where was I? Oh, right. This causes Remy and Linguini to get into an argument. Chaotic neutral. You guys hungry? What are you kidding? Remy invites his entire rat clan to come loot the entire restaurant to get back at Linguini for throwing him out. Matt Pat is actually right about this part. This is pretty messed up considering how diseased rats can be. You could argue throughout the movie that Remy has always been cleaning himself at his new apartment, uh, but the rats definitely haven't. Chaotic evil. No, wait! <laughs> Remy saves his brother from the trap Skinner sets for him, whose plan is to force him to design recipes for microwave burritos for him for the rest of his life. How he plans to do that with no brand or connections to back him up, God only knows, but whatever. Neutral good for Remy and neutral evil for Skinner. Where are you going? Back to the restaurant. They'll fail without me. Remy's motivation for going back to the restaurant is to support his friends and staff and for self-fulfillment. Lawful good. Remy and his clan capture the health inspector and hold him against his will. They also do this with Skinner. Granted, they have absolutely no intention of holding them from any longer than they need, but this is pretty messed up if you look at it from any real world logic. Which of course we always do. We're content creators. Anything to get clicks. Am I right, boys? Chaotic evil. The rats clean themselves in the dishwasher before running the restaurant for the evening. I've worked with those kinds of kitchens and that sort of dishwasher will kill most of the diseases on them, but it will also simultaneously kill the rats. The heat from those things can get ridiculous. Cartoon logic for the win, and I'm just gonna go with true neutral. Just tell me what the rat wants to cook. Colette is the coolest character in the movie. She works twice as hard as everyone else and is determined to be a great chef. And while she is hard and linguini at first, she does this as a form of tough love. After she gets close to him, she opens up and really starts to show her- Ah, damn it! I just realized Colette's a tsundere. But she is a good one. She sticks her neck out for linguini at the beginning of the movie and returns the restaurant and helps Remy because she believes in the mantra, anyone can cook more than anyone else in the movie. Lawful good. Linguini's alignment, he has no style, he has no grace. In fact, he has a bit of a funny face. However, he's also trying to get through life. At the beginning of the movie, he is a solid true neutral, but I'd argue at the end of the movie with him showing everything to Ego like this and his strength and loyalty to Remy, I'd argue he becomes lawful good at the end. If we completely ignore the fact that he was complacent in imprisoning two people against the is such a cool character for this movie. He introduces himself as the sorta second antagonist and the final boss of the movie. He even thrives on presenting himself as that to the press and to his audience. It's fun for both him and his brand that he is the critic that destroys careers. However, that scene with the Ratatouille is so good because it shows that under that facade is someone that appreciates the art of cooking more than anyone else and is more than willing to fess up when he is beaten and proven wrong. His review, despite being so short is a work of art and a perfect capstone to the movie. Ego, I think, starts the movie at lawful evil? Mostly because he admits that his brand of reviews thrives on negative criticism and he seems to enjoy canceling others. <coughs> Twitter! Mm -hmm. Sorry. But by the end, his complete heel turn turns him into a solid lawful good, considering everything he puts on the line for Remy and even invests in his business. Great movie, great scene, great character.
Okay guys, check it out. Skinner is an evil man who frequently tries to sabotage those he doesn't like while kidnapping a clearly sentient creature and forcing it to produce stuff for you under pain of death. Meanwhile, Remy is an artist who supports their friends, stands up for their principles, and minds their own business while trying not to disturb others. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but like, that would make Remy the hero protagonist and Skinner the bad guy antagonist, right? Right? Does that mean Film theory is wrong, and MatPat just got dunked on by a smaller channel? It's like you guys don't know me by now. Of course not. MatPat's film theory episode was fun to watch, and it does present some ideas that were very valid. Remy does some pretty shady things, and a lot of what he does is even worse considering that he is indeed a rat, and unfortunately there is just some biological hurdles that he has to contend with because of this. He's gonna carry diseases that are dangerous to humans, and that is a hurdle no amount of wishful thinking or grit can really get over. Remy is technically kind of dangerous. Meanwhile, Skinner is not a heartless monster. There were places in the film where he was was clearly in the right, and it was a fun thought experiment. Despite all of the sick dunking I did in this video, I respect the hell out of Matthew's channels. While I was teaching, I would frequently find episodes of his stuff to integrate into my lessons, especially the ones that involve math or science. Yeah, not every video is a winner, but when you're producing videos at his quality and as frequently as he's doing it, that's just gonna happen. What, Simpsons, Supernatural, and Family Guy are allowed long-running shows, but some educational channels that produce more episodes per year than all of them put together don't get a pass. All right, either way, Matt, if you somehow stumbled onto this video and you made it this far, thanks for being a good sport. You guys really should go subscribe, especially to Food Theory. Man, when I first heard about the channel, I was skeptical as hell, but in reality, it's their best work, often having real life history lessons and facts about business practices from different restaurants and grocery stores. It's nuts how good that channel actually is. Go subscribe to Food Theory. You don't need to subscribe to me. Go subscribe to Food Theory. Seriously, watch them. Meanwhile, I'm just sitting here in D&D land arguing about a pretty outdated system while trying to pretend that I can write video essays. Just saying, it's pretty incredible what he's been able to do over the course of his career. Cheers, guys. See you next time.